you know a sound of a clicking hard drive is never good news and it's not going to end well uh, once the hard drive starts clicking it usually means it's time to replace the hard drive and so there are certain steps that you can take to ensure that your data and your settings of your computer will be safe so do you know what to do when your hard drive starts clicking on this edition of the guru brew we're, we're going to examine what to do and how to correct the problem so let's get started I'm here at the computer that has the clicking noise. It doesn't always happen and I'm just noticing that the performance of the computer is going down and so I know I should do something soon or this computer could fail and I'll lose my data as well as my settings. So um, here's what we're going to do first. I'm going to the computer to find out a little bit more about it so that I can find a suitable hard drive replacement. If I go to my computer and I right click and I go to properties, click on the hardware tab, click on the device manager tab, look down through the devices and find the disk drives and click on the plus next to it. As you look down through these hard drives, you'll notice that there are USB devices that are listed as well as normal hard drives as well as floppies and CD units. What we're looking for is an actual hard disk, as our C hard disk, our boot. Um, so we need to do a little investigative work. As I look down through here, I see these generic uh, USB devices, which I know aren't what I'm looking for. And then the first one that I come to is ST. And ST tells me experience-wise that this is a Seagate hard disk. And to find out more about it, I can put my mouse on it, right click, go to properties, and then I can click on the volumes tab. There's a button here to click for population. Now I am using a Windows XP machine, however uh, a lot of the commands are the same for Windows 7 and Vista and so forth. Once the hard drive information is populated, I can see that the volume name is called C and that it's the, uh, about a 30 gig hard drive. So that is not the volume that I'm looking for, so I'll carry on. Uh, the second one is listed as WD, and that tells me that that's a Western Digital. So I can click on that. I can also right click, go to Properties, click on Volume, and click on Populate. This is my C volume, so this is the hard drive that I was looking for. I can tell that's a 38 gig, so it's about a 40 gig hard drive that I need to replace. So I'm going to need at least a 40 gig or bigger. And the other information I need to know before I go ahead and open this case and find a suitable replacement hard drive is I need to know what type of drive is it. Is it an IDE? Is it a SATA? And that information can be found in the same um, properties box by clicking the details button. It doesn't come right out and say it, what type of drive it is, but if you look down through these ID, IDs for the hardware or the compatibles, you can often find your answer within. If you look right here, the first part of this device instance ID is IDE. So that tells me right there that this is a Western Digital IDE 40 gig hard drive. Now that I know the capacity and the type of drive that I need, I can go ahead and get my drive, crack open the case, and begin to save my information. So hang on. Okay, so here we are again. I've got the computer on the bench after checking the hard drive and what it needs. And I found a suitable hard drive. I'm actually going to use um, this one. And this came out of another machine that I had. It's slightly bigger. It's an 80 gig. And so the other one that came out was a 40 gig, and so it'll work just fine. So um, as I'm looking at this machine, and I've got it here on the bench, I've got it opened up. Here's the machine that, or here's the hard drive that we're going to be replacing, and there's a backup drive underneath that we're not going to be messing with. And this is the IDE that will match the one that we're changing. So 
there's two ways that we can do, uh, do this. The first way is we can clone the hard drive. And what that will do is it will take the operating system, all the settings, all the data, everything off the old hard drive and put it on a new hard drive. And the advantage of cloning a hard drive is if you plan on using the same hardware. And when I say hardware, I mean the same computer, the same drives, the same environment that the old one came out of, um, such as this. This would be perfect for cloning. The other uh, way that you could do it is to back up the data using a backup um, system just grab all the data, all the settings, all the favorites, and then put it on a new machine and dump the data back in um, that way. So there's two ways that you got to think about it. If you're going to be using the same hardware, go ahead and do a clone. If you're changing hardware, a different machine, new machine, old machine, different machine, go ahead and do a backup and restore. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to do a clone on this machine and the first step is to pull this hard drive out of there and replace it with the new one and we're going to do some cable tricks here so um, I'll be back in just a second. So what I am going to do first before I remove these hard drives or anything like that is I am going to um, put this new hard drive that will be replacing the C drive our 80 gig in line with this existing ribbon cable and this ribbon cable has a spot on it for a slave so I am simply going to uh, make this a slave drive temporarily um, find a power hook the power up plug it into the ribbon cable and uh, get it in the chain so that we can begin the cloning procedure the first step in doing the clone is to look on the hard drive and I know it probably looks blurry but there's a little diagram here that shows you how to set it for cable select depending on how you set this jumper here so I'm gonna do that and I will be back okay I've set my jumper up for the appropriate spot so that it becomes a slave and now I'm just simply going to stick it in here temporarily so that I'm able to run the computer and to begin copying. The red stripe on these IDE cables always goes towards the power cable. And then I just have to search down through here and find an extra power cable that I can use. Here's one here. Just have to turn everything around a little bit. So it's not pretty, but I have the hard drive in there temporarily. Um, I'm going to go ahead and boot the computer and I'll be back. Okay, now that I've booted my computer with the hard drive piggybacked, I want to go into my computer. And I want to make sure that the drive now exists. Uh, forgive the camera this is the only way I have to record this and there it is there it's showing up as J now I also have another one here that's called K and that's because this was a recovery partition to the hard drive that I'm using um, so both of these J and K can be formatted and used and that's what I'm going to do now To format the recovery partition and the other drive, um, the simplest way I know of is to go to start to this control panel, administrative tools, computer management. disk manager and here are the two drives here here's the K and here's the J so the first step is just to delete uh, the recovery partition yes 
which leaves me with J, which is now one. And I am just going to do a format on J. Yes. And I am just going to do a quick format because the cloning software that I'm going to be using also will do a format. So let's go. So that will be formatted and it will be called J, which should already be done. Let's see. We just did a quickie. My computer. And there it is. There's J. Properties. And there's a full desk. Okay, on with the next. Okay, the next step is after I've formatted the extra hard drive that's just sitting in this case is to download and install um, some cloning software and I use ESIS to do backup. It has an excellent cloning feature on this and I will leave the link to this uh, software in the um, description below. Um, it, is not very expensive and it will save your hide um, so I am going to use this um, disk clone here um, when it starts up I'm presented with a few choices I would like to copy um, my source would be the 37.27 gig hard drive next and my destination will be the 74.55 gig and then this last one here is just a backup drive that's in the case as well next so it's showing me one last time before I do it that I'm copying from the source which is C the 37.26 uh, gig hard drive. I am copying it to the J, um, which is also listed um, as 37.26. That's because it has to match exactly. But when I'm all done, I can actually resize this by grabbing this and pulling it to the full 74. So, um, if your hard drive, your source is actually bigger, make sure you drag that over. Otherwise, you'll still get stuck with uh, 40 gig instead of the new 80. And proceed. Okay. Okay, so we're going to let this run. It's, uh, it's surprisingly quick, this to-do backup system and I highly recommend it. So I'll catch you as soon as the, uh, the cloning is completed. Okay, great. The cloning process has now finished and for the 40 gigs it took roughly about 35 minutes and 33 seconds. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is to take the, the drive on the top there that is our receiver um, and replace it with the one on the second uh, inside that metal cage. So let's do that now. And also, um, I didn't show you, but off camera, I put the jumper back so that our new drive that's in here now will become the cable select or master. Great. I've just got to hook these cables up and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I've got the new drive in there now. I've got all my cables hooked up. Uh, the only thing left to do now is 
and plug it in and give it a try. And this clone program works really great. Like I said before, uh, you shouldn't notice a thing. It should just uh, look just like the other drive and uh, everything should remain the same um, as if nothing happened. So let's take a look here. Really great sign. And it, it, it looks the same to me. Let's just uh, go in and make sure all our drivers are there. It's still loading up, but we'll go into the device manager and just see if everything still looks intact here. Look at that. All the devices are in their right spot. I don't get no complaints. Let's take a look at my computer. The local C is now 80 gig. Um, my backup drive remains that I've always had there. Looks great. Okay guys, that looks like uh, it's going to be a success. This machine now can be buttoned up, the cover put back on, and put back into use. And um, we saved ourselves a lot of headache by catching the drive early when we seen it uh, and heard it start clicking and shutting off unexpectedly. And so everything should be great from now on in. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Take care. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.